Thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. This is Mari reporting on recent volcano news. Just a few days after the official alert level had been decreased, a massive explosion occurred during last Saturday night, generating an ash plume that rose possibly up to 15 kilometers in altitude, that's 50,000 feet. The height of the plume was estimated by the VAAC Tokyo using satellite imagery. It quickly drifted and dissipated in southerly directions. Even if the plume was a bit smaller than the estimate, it illustrates that the volcano is unpredictable and capable of producing strong eruptions. According to seismic data, the event lasted more than seven minutes and produced a very strong signal. Following the prolonged phase with little to no activity during 2018 until early May of 2019, the alert status, which had been at the highest level almost without interruption for the past six years, was decreased to a level three. However, at the same time, the activity was on the rise. It is now, as this picture illustrates, starting to calm. Today, May 30th, Etna Volcano had an eruption that started overnight. Around 3 a.m. local time, a small, effusive fissure opened up on the south-southeastern base of the new southeast crater and generated a small lava flow, which is currently still active. Another lava flow originated from a vent on the southeast side on the same cone near the area where the eruption in 2018 had started. Seismic activity started to rise last evening, peaked around midnight, then decreased a bit but has been more or less stable since. For more than a month, sometimes intense ash emissions have been taking place from the northeast crater and to lesser extent from Boca Nuova. These ashes are currently believed not to be formed by fresh magna rising in the conduits, but instead composed of older material that is now being vented from the inner conduits. It can be interrupted as the surface expression of the internal readjustments that followed the brief but intense eruption at Christmas last year, which drained some of the magma from the conduits and reservoirs. Another factor are likely seismic events around the volcano in the days and weeks after after, which also might have caused internal shifts in the magma storage. I also came across an interesting article. Can volcanic eruptions affect hurricane activity? A new climate and atmospheric science paper supported the modeling, analysis, predictions, and projections, also known as the MAP program, examined the impact of volcanic aerosols on recent global tropical cyclone activity using observation, reanalysis, and models. The paper documents observations of reduced tropical cyclone activity Activity only in the North Atlantic following the last three volcanic eruptions. However, the signal could not be clearly attributed to the volcanoes as all three eruptions were simultaneous to the El Nino events. Reanalysis studies did not support a robust impact of volcanic eruptions on potential intensity of tropical cyclones or proxies of storm initiation, also known as the Genesis indices. In models, historic simulation showed a reduced potential intensity for tropical cyclones following volcanic eruptions. However, this effect did not hold up after accounting for differences between the model environment and observations. Taken together, the study's results show that in recent eruptions, the volcanic aerosols did not reduce global tropical cyclone activity. A differing opinion is shown in a recent study led by Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory a researcher named Susanna Camargo and the University of Quebec at Montreal, Francesco Posada. The study provides a deeper insight into how large volcanic eruptions affect hurricane activity. Previous studies could not clearly determine the effects of volcanic eruptions on hurricanes because the few large volcanic eruptions in the last century coincided with El Nino southern oscillation events, which also influence hurricane activity. In the study published, 
published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, Camargo and Posada approached this relationship by simulating very large volcanic eruptions in the tropics multiple times. Their modeling told a more complex story than previous papers had indicated. This is the first study to explain the mechanism of how large volcanic eruptions influences hurricanes globally. According to their findings, large tropical volcanic eruptions can affect hurricanes by shifting the intertropical convergence zone. That's a region that circles the earth near the equator and greatly influences rainfall in hurricane activity. As the intertropical convergence zone moves after a large volcanic eruption, it affects both the intensity and the frequency of hurricanes, causing some regions to experience an increase in activity and other regions to experience a decrease. For example, a large eruption in the tropical regions of the northern hemisphere leads to a southward shift of the intertropical convergence zone. This results in an increase in the hurricane activity between the equator and the 10 degree north line and a decrease further north. The zone's southward shift has further effects in the southern hemisphere, causing a decrease in activity on the coasts of Australia, Indonesia, and Tanzania, while Madagascar and Mozambique experience an increase. These changes can last up to four years following an eruption. Camargo and Posada were able to separate the effects of volcanic eruptions and El Nino Southern Oscillation on hurricane activity and show the different impacts that the two factors have on hurricanes globally. Their findings are important in helping scientists understand the relationship between volcanoes and hurricanes. Very interesting uh, research there. There's so many pieces to the puzzle to understand this whole big picture. It's fascinating. Well, I would like to thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this volcano update. Please subscribe, give us a like and a share. Let us know your thoughts, leave a comment below. Your support helps us out tremendously. Thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. We should be live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. You guys have a great day. Take care.